you see these little black bugs wandering all over your snake, you see your snake soaking in its water dish, you see little white flecks all over your snake, you see your snake looking skinny, you see some kind of movement on your snake around the eyes, underneath the chin, all over its back. Those are snake mites and we need to get rid of them. We're gonna tell you how. So you have the new snake and it keeps soaking in its water dish and your humidity in the cage is, is pretty good. So humidity for a ball python, like 70% would be quite nice. But if you have an animal and it's sitting in this water dish, and this is pepper, but if you actually were to look inside the dish and you have a nice light water dish, you'd start noticing you have these little black dots. And sometimes they look like a little poppy seed or a little bit tear shaped, or you see the mites actually walking around on the dish. Once you've identified that you actually have snake mites in your collection, you basically, now you need to move forward and you actually need to eradicate them. Most important thing is you need to actually eradicate it off the snake. There is a good way to do that. There's a safe way to do that. And we're gonna cover that. So one of the safest ways without blasting your animal with chemicals and doing things, these all these things are gonna stress your animal. We need to do something that's reasonably safe and that we can get rid of the mites, but actually not cause a lot of stress and uh, discomfort to your animal. So one of the tricks I like to use is I like to set up a water bath. So if we have an animal that has mites, we would actually remove the animal from the cage where it actually has mites, and we're gonna put the animal into a clean bin. First step we're gonna do, we're gonna take this and we're gonna put this animal in warm water. And warm water means something that is acceptable to the temperature of the animal. So if I have a ball python, something like this, warm would be 85, 88 degrees, something like that. Maybe on the cool side, maybe 80 degrees. But anywhere from 80 to, 80 to 90 degrees, warm water. And we're gonna put the water halfway up the snake's body. And the reason why we do that, we fill this with water that only goes up about halfway so the animal can still sit in the container. It's not panicking. If you do the water too deep, the animal can panic. You can cause uh, distress and discomfort to the animal. And ultimately, you could cause that animal possibly to even drown. We want the animal to sit in this water and be comfortable. First trick we do now, we put water in here and we give the animal about a half hour with the water. So that means that if the animal's in its cage and let's say it happens to be thirsty, it's gonna drink. So I put the animal in the water for a half hour, leave it alone. The next step we're gonna do, we're gonna use something like dishwashing detergent. In this case, Dawn dishwashing detergent works wonderful. And we would add just a drop or two to the water and you see how it becomes foamy. So, so this isn't gonna hurt the animal. So we know the animal's already had a chance to drink and now it's sitting in, in water. And what we're gonna do, so if you notice that it's, it's just a little bit more than halfway up the animal's body and that's perfect, but you notice the animal's sitting comfortably. So what it does is it changes the surface tension of the water. So any mite that comes in contact with water, it's gonna help suffocate it and drown it. So when I, first, when I first put the snake in here, and let's say the snake was covered in mites, I really wanna start getting down to business. So I'm gonna start periodically. I might do this over the next couple hours. I'm gonna keep on swishing the animal around. Some of the most notable places where you notice mites are around the eyes. And in really bad cases, the area around the eyes will actually become uh, swollen. They'll swell up and mites will get right in there. They'll lay their eggs in there. So now the next trick we're gonna to need to, to long-term to deal with these mites, we have to manage the temperatures of this bath. If we're gonna soak the animal in water, we need to ba basically make sure we're managing the temperatures. So I got this animal in a uh, soap water solution and I'm gonna use a heating pad. So in this case, this is a, a Zoomed heating pad and I would actually clearly take it out of the wrapper and I can put part of it you know, I don't even need to put the whole thing because this heating pad is gonna do quite a bit to, uh, to heat this up. But, trick, most important thing, I'm going to use the thermostat. The thermostat has a probe. The probe goes into the water, the heating pad plugs into the thermostat. And what this probe is doing is it's monitoring the temperature. Set the temperature to 85 degrees. 85 is a simple uh, temperature that something like a boa or a king snake any kind of python or king snake can usually handle. So most snakes can handle 80 degrees, 85 degrees. But the thermostat is critical because in this little chamber, if I took this and put this on a heating pad, there's no way to regulate that this doesn't get too hot. The thermostat is my protection device to prevent the animal from overheating. Because once again, my objective here is to put the animal into a container 
into a soap, a di very dilute soap water solution with air holes, manage its temperature, overheating pad, and I will leave it here for days. Another thing, snakes are escape artists. So always make sure uh, you've basically really secured the lid, and that's either being weights or you can also use uh, tape, like electrical tape would be great, and you leave it here. The animals should sit here comfortably for days. All right, so some of the places where I'm gonna look for mites. This would be a really easy snake to find mites on. So this is a piebald and it's an albino, so two, two different recessive genes. So around the eyes, you wanna look for mites, and uh, you sometimes would notice the scales being lifted. The mites will actually go underneath the scale where they have contact with the immediate skin, and they'll actually bite the snake and they're, they're feeding on blood. And that's gonna uh, cause you know, stress to the animal. It's gonna basically help dehydrate the animal. So mites rob this animal of blood, which is essentially robbing it of moisture, so it causes the animal to become dehydrated. It's also very stressful. I think the saliva from the mite is uh, an irritant. So some of the places you might notice around the eyes, sometimes right here, this little slit right here in the heat pits, any of those places are places to look for mites. And if you see any raised scales, sometimes if you, you go and you scratch, you'll see a mite you know, come out. And if you kill the mite just by squishing it and you see it squish, real, you know, that's an easy indicator that it's mites. Sometimes mites will go by the cloaca and you can see mites there. But generally, you can uh, look against the scalation. So you're looking underneath the scales and you look for anything lifted. So an animal like this would be very easy to see on a yellow and a white snake. Some of the safest things you can do is actually treat it as if it actually has mites. And that means when you first get it, put it into a hydration bath, so you're soaking it in water, and then you put in a little bit of a, a soap solution for a couple days. And that is just basically, that is for clarification that you're, you're dealing with the mites. That's just a just-in-case type situation. Uh, but, Sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry, as opposed to spreading them into your collection. So a little bit about the life history of a mite. So mites are basically, as an adult mite, they're gonna feed actively. We're really interested in the large female mites because those are the things that are laying, you know, 50 plus eggs. So they're gonna feed on the animals, they're, they're gonna feed on the animal multiple times, they're gonna grow until they're ready to lay eggs. At that point, they often drop off the snake and they'll crawl out in the enclosure, into the substrate, any place into the fixtures where they can lay eggs. And uh, some of the things that mites like, they like humidity. So humidity of 60% or greater is uh, very friendly to mites. When it's very, very dry, uh, it acts as a desiccant, so you can sometimes kill the mites just by drying them up. But in a normal life, uh, environment of a snake and mites, they're very, uh, they're parallels. So what's good for the snake is great for the mites. So let's address that. So we are letting the animals soak in water for days. How long? Well, you could, you could easily soak a snake uh, four, six days easily in this solution as long as you're managing the temperatures. Let's say you need to clean the, the water if the animal pees or defecates. You want to be, you know, clear about that kind of stuff. You don't want the animal to live in polluted water. But you're going to do this, and at that point, by swishing it over and over again, you're going to kill all the mites on that animal. So if you really have an animal that's badly infested, you might want to leave it in there for, you know, five, six, seven days. All right? The animal, as long as it's healthy, can survive that. If the animal's really in a stressed out state, if it's a respiratory infection, it has uh, any kind of disease or problems like that, you might want to watch out um, leaving an animal sitting in water because long term, that animal as it's succumbing to the, the ailment, whatever it has, it might uh, actually end up drowning or something like that. But mites, very important to understand, mites cause stress and they, they basically lower the quality of that animal's life. So they cause depression. So if you have an animal and you heavily infest it with mites, you can get a secondary respiratory infection, you get an animal that doesn't want to eat, you can get an animal that's agitated, you can get an animal that is unhappy and is nervous and just isn't acting its normal self. A lot of those are really good indicators for mites because mites are, in, uh, you know, basically they're an irritant. So if you trapped me in a room full of mosquitoes, you quickly notice that I get very upset and you couldn't talk to me. Same thing with the snakes. Now we've rid the animal of the mites. So we've got all the mites off the snake. Well, if we take that snake that we've cleaned of mites and we put it back in the same enclosure, in the same situation, now we still have that problem because those mites are gonna be right back on that snake. So now it's very important. So we wanna consider things like our substrate. Cypress mulch, uh, cocoa peat, aspen bedding. 
All of this provides everything that a mite wants to, to basically hide and lay its eggs. So uh, first thing I would do is I would throw away the substrate. Uh, get rid of the substrate or at the very least uh, freeze the substrate or superheat the substrate. So mites generally die at temperatures above 110 degrees and they also die when they're freezing. I could take an enclosure like this where I took an animal out of it that actively had mites. This is beautiful for mites. Every little nook and cranny is perfect for mites. So all of this, mites, eggs, all of that, look at that, look at that background. Everything in here is, is like once I get mites in here, I really have a problem getting rid of them. So one of the easiest things to do, I could freeze the enclosure for a couple days. That's an absolute way to get rid of them. Another thing I could do is I could empty it of all its material, its bedding, all of its fixtures. I could easily take this whole thing once the bedding's out, put it in a hot shower. So temperatures of 110 degrees or greater are easily going to kill mites. So I could just put this in the shower, blast it with hot water, and that will basically kill all the mites eggs and mites. But another way we can do, empty out everything and then we can get something like a spray bottle and uh, basically put a soap solution in here and we can spray this cage down, making sure we're getting up in the corners. We could soak this in a container of soapy water and just leave it underwater. That will certainly drown things. Another thing we can use is we can use uh, permethrin solutions. So this is something where it's already mixed, but pyrethrin, permethrin, all these uh, type chemicals are absolutely deadly to mites. Um, I will note that when you spray this on an animal and the animal drinks it, it can also be deadly to your reptiles. So it's very, very important, but you can easily spray the cage. You can bomb the cage with this and you just spray it in every crack and crevice and you do it multiple different times. Change your substrate, make sure all your fixtures are clean, put the animal back in there. Maybe one of the first things you do is actually put the animal back on paper. Initially, one thing you can do, prevent a mite. This is something that works very well. And what you do is you would, uh, if there was paper in this cage, you can spray the paper with preventamite, you follow the directions and you let it dry. And now you've treated your animal for five, seven days and it's certainly well hydrated. Now you can rinse it off. So now your animal, just take it and rinse it off in nice clean water. You put it back into its cage now that it's been cleaned. Essentially at that point, you've interrupted the life cycle of mites. Something you need to know. Mites don't just magically happen. So mites are not just like, I go outside and get a stick and I magically have snake mites. Usually I have to get snake mites from somewhere and mites happen. That's, we get snakes, any, they, they can happen anywhere. And uh, the, the trick is actually to ID the fact they actually have, the snake came in with mites and address it because it's very simple when you first get a snake to address the mites. Very easy way to interrupt the cycle. Once it's in your collection and in a large collection or it's in all these different cages and I have all my vivariums, like something like this. This is a tragedy to get mites into a cage like this because now I have all this aspen, I have backgrounds, I have the mites which will actually leave the cage. Love my dust. Well, they can, they can leave the, the cage and go on the floor? They can go anywhere. Oh. They can do whatever. So they'll climb up on the wood. As long as this room is humid and it has the right temperatures, which is, you know, 75, 88 degrees, the mites are happy. But the mites will just crawl all over the place. So then I go and treat the snake, I treat the enclosure, and the mites are still there. There's just that one clutch of mite eggs that have been laid. And then when they hatch, they smell the snake and they come back after the snake. In conclusion, the importance of dealing with snake mites is snake mites cause uh, many health defects or negatives to your collection, to your pets. And they can also uh, promote disease and uh, well-being will never be achieved in your collection when you actually have snake mites. So uh, it's very, very important. It's, a, it's an aspect of husbandry that is critical. Besides temperatures and managing you know, husbandry like humidity and setting the animal up right, if you set up everything right and you still have mites and there's large concentrations of mites on your animal, the animal will fail to thrive. It will not eat, it will suffer, it will often get a secondary uh, respiratory infection, the animal will be uh, unpleasant to handle, and once I touch an animal with mites and I go touch another animal, I've just contaminated that. And what else you should notice is a mite actively feeding on one animal 
dropping off that animal and going to another animal and feeding on that animal, that can transmit disease like uh, Pseudomonas, any kind of uh, bacterial infections. So it's very critical. So managing mites with some of the simple tools and uh, methods that I've discussed is a very effective way that all of us can handle and a lot of it is basically household products. But it's just understanding the know-how of mites and how to treat them. So right now we're working on some of our care videos and it's, uh, it's important for you to tell us actually what you want to learn about because my level of expertise, I'd love to put that information out there so it would actually better help people manage how they're keeping their animals and understand their animals. So it's important when you're talking in our videos and you're commenting, tell us what you're actually looking for because we're now in the uh, process of promoting our care videos and we're going to start doing these different care videos to basically help other keeper, uh, keepers achieve better achieve what they're doing and uh, so but you got to tell us and one great place to do that is in our discord community don't forget to subscribe to new england reptile youtube channel like comment and tell us what's going on and join our discord community and continue uh the discussion because we use twitter now don't we yeah all right so i have stepped out of the shadows and i'm trying to do twitter so please uh join our twitter uh i'll try to get uh active there and start talking about things I'm a little little new to the Twitter thing, so uh, our Twitter is at Nerd Reptiles. Please follow me and uh, tell us what you think.